Welcome to Beware the Scare, my name is Tyler Style and today we're going to be looking at Saw 3. Just like in Saw 2, this movie was directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman. Saw 3 has John Kramer on his deathbed. John's apprentice Amanda kidnaps a doctor that must be kept alive while a man named Jeff has to go through one of Jigsaw's games. Now let's get into the movie. We start off the movie where Saw 2 ended, with Detective Eric Matthews still chained up. The bathroom scene in this film was actually the exact same bathroom from Scary Movie 4. The producers asked if they could use it because it was an exact replica to the bathroom in Saw 1 and 2. I, I did it! We're saved! What's wrong? Wrong foot. Mother Eric finds a saw and tries to cut the chain, but we already know that doesn't work. He figures out that he's supposed to cut his foot off, but he's too much of a bitch to do it. Instead, he uses the back of the toilet seat and smashes his foot until it's destroyed. Then he snaps his foot back and gets out of the chain, leading us to the title card. We go to Rig and his team, who just found the aftermath to a trap. We flash back to the trap and we see Troy, who is in the trap because he is constantly in and out of prison and hasn't used the advantages he's had in his life. He has a bunch of chains attached to him and he has to rip them out of his body within 90 seconds. A nail bomb will go off after the time and he doesn't want to be in there when that happens. He removes almost all of the chains but he can't get the one out of his jaw. I don't even know if that's humanly possible to do. Might be a little too hard, Jigsaw. The detectives assume that Jigsaw has an accomplice. What I don't understand is, how the hell could Jigsaw do all of this? He was damn near on his deathbed the last time we saw him. They also realized that the game wasn't winnable because the door to leave was welded shut, meaning Troy couldn't get out even if he broke out of all the chains. We fast forward to Carrie back at her house. She goes to her bathroom and wipes off the mirror seeing Eric behind her. Except it's all just in her head and he's actually not there. She starts watching the tape from Troy's game and the TV changes to a live feed from a camera in her closet. She goes to find the camera and Mr. Piggy gets her from behind. She's in her very own trap and she has to put her hand into acid to retrieve a key. If she doesn't get it, then her ribs will be ripped out of her body. She gets the key and after she unlocks herself, she still can't get out and ends up dead. We go to Lynn, who goes to her job as a doctor. After putting a chest tube in a patient, she goes to her locker and when trying to leave, the door is locked. While trying to call someone, she gets attacked by Mr. Piggy. I don't know why I call it Mr. Piggy when I don't know the gender of the pig, and I truly apologize for assuming. But I'm still gonna call it Mr. Piggy, so let's get back to the movie. Lynn is trapped and Amanda wheels her into another room where we find John motherfucking Kramer. John is on his deathbed and Lynn's job is to keep him alive while another person completes a game. Amanda puts a device around Lynn's neck and if John dies before the person finishes, then the device will explode and kill Lynn. We go to the main game starring Jeff, who's trapped inside of a crate. His game is dedicated to him deciding whether or not he wants to forgive people that were involved in the death of his son, Dylan, who was ran over by a car while at the park. He gets out of the crate and we go to a flashback where Jeff is pretending to hold a gun to the person who killed Dylan. Jeff notices that one of the toys in Dylan's room is gone and yells at his daughter for taking it. Jeff gets out of the crate and finds a note saying to open the door. He also receives a key and a piece of a photo with him on it. Lynn is working on John and Lynn tells Amanda that he needs to go to a hospital. Amanda grabs Lynn and tells her that he isn't leaving the room. John starts having a seizure and Lynn tells Amanda to give him oxygen and hold him down. After John starts bleeding from the mouth, Lynn takes control and gets him back to normal. Lynn says he needs to go to a hospital and have a surgery, but Amanda says the surgery has to be done there. We go back to Jeff where he walks into a freezing cold room where he finds a naked woman named Danica. She was the only witness present at Dylan's accident, but she drove off rather than staying. Jeff can save her by retrieving a key, but if he gets it, he will have to put his face on frozen poles. The test begins and water starts spraying on Danica. As she gets drenched, he yells at her for stopping and he decides not to help her until she's already frozen. When he realizes what he's done, he runs to grab the key and takes a nasty chunk out of his face while doing so. He tries to unlock her, but the lock is trapped in ice. He leaves the room and finds another piece of the picture that has his son Dylan on it, as well as a bullet. We go back to Lynn, who is looking around the lair. Amanda finds her and gives Lynn the opportunity to kill her, but Lynn doesn't want to because of the device around her neck. We go to a flashback where John is painting Bud Chin Billy, and we go to Amanda's game which we saw in the first saw. We don't get a clear timeline when this happens, but then we see John and Amanda talking right after he recruits her. He tells her that this will be the start to her new life. Now back to the present. Amanda tells John that Jeff made it out of the room. He made it through the freezer room. He tried to save her. 
That's some bullshit. He only tried after she was practically dead. Jeff's taking a merrily stroll down a hallway where he finds Billy on a crashed tricycle, similar to how Dylan looked. He picks up Billy and once again we hear that noise he makes. Uh, that noise always gives me the heebie-jeebies. Jeff walks into a room where he hears a man calling out to help him. Jeff learns that this next test is with the judge, who gave his son's killer a six-month sentence. The only way he can save the judge is to burn Dylan's possessions to get the key. The test begins and pigs start dropping into a shredder. Those pigs have real maggots on them. They get liquefied and the pig juice comes crashing on the judge. Ow, gross. Jeff starts yelling at the judge and the judge convinces Jeff to save him. Jeff walks over to get the key and after thinking about it for a while, finally burns Dylan's possessions, getting the key and freeing the judge. Lynn is getting ready to do surgery on John to relieve the pressure on his brain. She gives him a general anesthetic and then cuts into John's head while he is still awake and alert. She uses pliers to pull back the skin and meat and we see John's skull. She cleans off the skull with alcohol and uses a fucking power drill to put holes into his skull. And if you thought that was it, <laughs> you're wrong. She pulls out a mini circular saw to cut into his skull. While this is happening, John gets flashes of a woman. Lynn removes the skull and now we can see what's really on his mind. His heart rate starts dropping and John sees another memory of the same woman. Mistaking Lynn for that woman, he grabs her and says he loves her. Amanda gets jealous and storms out of the room to cut herself. We go to a flashback of when John gave Amanda her first test and it's actually for the first Saw game with Adam and Lawrence. She's the one who kidnapped Adam and brought him to the bathroom. John lays down to play dead and why the hell are his feet like that? That looks uncomfortable as hell. Then again, I'm pigeon toed so it might not be so bad for you normal walkers. Amanda turns off the light and shuts the door, bringing us back to the present. John is back to normal after the surgery and Lynn is wiping off her face. Amanda comes back inside to get close to John and Lynn tells her that he can't hear her and she gets pissed. She attacks Lynn and tries to pull a gun out before John tells her to put it away. He tells her to leave the room and we get another flashback where Amanda goes back to the first game after it's already done. She wakes Adam up and tells him she's going to help him, just to suffocate him. Jeff and the judge are walking to the next test and Jeff finds another piece of the photo that shows his daughter, as well as a magazine for a pistol. He opens up the door that leads to Timothy Young, the man who hit Dylan. Timothy is in a trap called The Rack. The Rack is one of the most painful traps in all of the Saw movies. The Rack twists one limb at a time and then finally his head. Jeff has to take a shotgun shot in order to retrieve a key to unlock him from the trap. In usual Jeff fashion, he just sits there and doesn't immediately help him. Are you a murderer? I wanted to kill him every day. Oh my god! For three years, I wanted to kill you. Ah, ah, yeah, maybe I am. After a while, he decides to try to save him as Timothy's third limb snaps, and Jeff tries to get the key without taking the bullet himself. He successfully does it, but when he lets go of the wire, the shotgun shoots the judge, killing him. Jeff tries to save Timothy, but it's too late as Timothy's head twists too much. Jeff yells that he forgives Timothy while we go back to Lynn and John. They are talking, and Lynn says that she would do anything to see her husband. Lynn begs for John to let her go and he holds her hand. Amanda sees this and runs out of the room. She finds an envelope with her name on it and she opens it up, but we won't know what's in this envelope until a later movie. Amanda walks back into the room and John tells Amanda to let Lynn go. Amanda refuses because Jeff isn't done with the game completely. Even though he's done all of the tests, he still needs to walk through a hallway to escape. Amanda yells at John and threatens to kill Lynn. John starts talking about Eric Matthews and we go back to the first scene in the movie. Eric is limping down the hallway and Amanda hears him. Amanda gets attacked by Eric and they get into a fight. Eric beats Amanda with a stick. Eric bites her and that's a little kinky, but who knows, Amanda might like it. He smashes her head into a wall because she won't tell him where his son is. She definitely doesn't like that though. She kicks his foot again, but this time he is in so much pain that he can't move. She gets away as Eric hits her with a comment that messes with her. Back to the present, Amanda and John are still arguing and Amanda says the games don't change people and that he is a murderer. Jeff gets to a door and uses the key he got at the beginning to open it. Jeff gets a gun and the final piece of the ripped photo. Jeff walks into the lair where everyone is and as this happens Amanda shoots Lynn who falls into Jeff's arms. Turns out that Lynn was Jeff's wife and out of rage, Jeff shoots Amanda in the neck. 
John explains that this isn't Lynn or Jeff's game, this is Amanda's game because she is a murderer and her games aren't winnable. Even when he was explaining the game to Lynn, he was actually talking to Amanda. You are being tested. Your will is being tested. Your will to keep someone alive. Can you do that? Can you follow the rules and grant someone the gift of life? Amanda dies and Jeff points the gun at John. John says that he hasn't learned anything because he wants to kill him. Jeff tries to shoot him, but there was only one bullet in the magazine. As Lynn is dying, John says that he can save Lynn, and all Jeff has to do is forgive him. Jeff says he forgives him, but I don't think he really does, because he pulls out a power saw and slits John's throat. I forgive you. John pulls out a tape recorder, and it says that John was Jeff's final test, and that because he killed him, he has failed. John said that Jeff couldn't kill him, but never told him why. The reason is because John is the only person who knows where Jeff's daughter is. As the tape ends, the device on Lynn's head explodes to end the movie. Saw 3 came out in 2006 and very well could have been the last Saw with the only two known suspects being killed. But they somehow came out with five more movies with Jigsaw and Amanda being dead. How did they do this? We'll find out next week when I cover Saw 4. If you haven't seen Saw 3, go watch it. I try to keep these videos as short as possible so there's stuff I take out. So there's some things you missed, but you get the gist. My name is Tyler Style, and this has been 10 Minute Movies. Thank you for watching my video on Saw 3. What was the best trap in the entire movie? Let me know in the comments below. Saw 3 was the first horror movie I saw in theaters with my mom, and I wonder what the employees were thinking. Her taking an eight year old to a Saw movie? Well, who cares? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later.